but some space payment system scoring. In this presentation, we explore the overall acre scorecard design and link to payment structure. We've seen in this module that general scorecard structure is a multi-criteria assessment of ecological condition for the delivery of bundles of ecosystem services, utilizing a range of results indicators. Designing a scoring system, it is crucial that the selection of results indicators is evidence-based. For plant species selection, extensive use is made of existing monitoring and research programs where plant species present in a range of seminatural habitats of varying ecological condition are recorded. For example, the list of high nature value grassland indicators from the National Seminatural Grassland Surveys was used as a starting point for the design of grassland scoring systems. This was reduced to a shorter list of species which are more readily identifiable and reflect a range of conditions across wet and dry grasslands. To reflect the habitat requirements of other taxonomic groups, for example, birds, mammals and invertebrates, vegetation structure is used as a measure of quality. Thresholds or cut-up points for high, medium and low for each indicator should be carefully selected so that the overall combination of results indicators, their thresholds, relative weighting reflects the overall condition of the target area. Scorecards have been tested in various research and pilot programs and checked against species data and also to a more limited extent against soil and water quality monitoring data. The design of the payment structure is also a very important element of results-based payment schemes. The graph on the right reflects the payment structure of many of the pilot programs. It is not a linear relationship with the score. In this specific case, scores one to three were similar to that expected to be delivered under baseline conditionality. So payments started at four. And in order to incentivize moving from medium to the rarer, higher scores, there was a steep increase or inflection in payments from score seven to eight. In order to manage limited budgets in many pilots, the aggressive payments were used, which allowed for payments to be made on all areas and incentivize improvements on them within budgetary constraints. The combination of design of scorecards and the link, the link with the payment structure are important to ensure clear signals on improvements required and a coherent approach across the legislative framework. We will now look at the three scorecards that will be the most widely used in acres, the grassland, peatland and scrub woodland scorecards. The grassland scorecard, as you can see here, there is overall 10 results indicators and management information also recorded, which can be used to guide targeting of supporting and landscape actions. As you can see here, the weighting for section A is approximately 90% 90, 90 or 90 of the 100 marks. Uh, this weighting for section B is 10. In general, there are three to thrive thresholds used for each indicator. So as we can see here for, for A1, this is what is the number of positive indicators. So there's a list of positive indicators here. And as you walk your transect through the, the field, you tick off the species that are present. Then these are totted up at the end. And if you've got zero to four, you're in a low quality, improved or semi-improved grassland. Moving into five to, to eight, it's getting slightly bigger from a better from a nature value perspective. And then high and very high require nine to 12 species to be recorded or 13 plus but for the very high. The cover of uh, positive indicators is also important. You can have maybe a number of the indicators, but they might only occur in the small proportion of the, of the field or they mightn't occur extensively throughout it at all. So this indicator measures the extent of cover throughout the field. So this can be low, moderate, high, again, or, or very high, where you encounter multiple different positive indicators with almost every step taken and in between the steps taken along your, your transect. We combine this in terms of the measuring the overall ecological integrity with a measure of negative indicators. And here, these are indicators of agricultural improvement, nutrient enrichment or, or unwanted uh, weed species. So at high numbers. So in these areas, 
all these also, as Dolores will explain in her presentation, have some uh, na nature value, but it's the, the high covers of, of these. So you can see here you have the positive indicator or the negative indicators ticked and whether these are high, greater than 25 percent in, in dense patches are abundant throughout the field. You get a, a, a negative weighting on this or if they're low, less than 5 percent. So there's a tolerance there. So none present are scattered in small clumps uh, across the field. Our next indicator is vegetation uh, structure, and here we recognize the two man main management regimes of, of cutting or uh, meadowing and uh, pasturing or grazing. In the gray swards, there uh, an indicator measures essentially the level of grazing on, on the field, whether this is optimum uh, undergrazed or over overgrazed, and this covers go from minus 10 to plus 25. On the Meadow fields are they're cut for hay or, or silage. The vegetation structure is mainly based around the quality of the, the, the field margins because they will have quite a, a uniform structure in and cut swards. Our next indicators, A5 is just a, a recording of whether the field is suitable for, for mash fertility or not. It doesn't contribute to the uh, overall score. It's additional information that's recorded uh, within the, the system. A6 is a field boundary quality where you assess the, the field boundaries and you look at the worst with, uh, 30 metres within the, the field and assess whether this is poor in terms of nature value, moderate or, or, or good. Then we move on to section B of, of the scorecard. Here we're giving clear signals to the farmers of things that shouldn't be happening, but if they are recorded, they result in significant negative weighting. So we have damaging activities and whether these are uh, extensive throughout the, the field, uh, moderate or, or low or non, non existent. So damage activities, for example, include supplementary feeding, damage to archaeological features, inappropriate herbicide use, burning or, or dumping, for example. Then B2 is what is the level of risk to water quality, quality of natural water bodies within the, the, the parcel or downstream from the parcel relating to flow, sediment, nutrients or, or other pollutants. Again, this is divided into four categories, high, moderate, low or, or none. The extent of bare soil uh, and uh, erosion, this is just a, a broad indicator of, of, of soil uh, quality and whether this are impacts on, on soil quality for management activities within the, the field. So these are high, again, moderate or low. And then we the next indicator B4 is picking up the cover of non uh, native invasive species, particularly problematic species such as rhododendron, J Japanese knotweed, giant uh, hogweed, for for example, and the cover of these throughout the the field. And these would obviously trigger uh, supporting actions as well where appropriate in order to control these. So the the scoring system here is acting as an early warning system here, particularly if these are lower scattered, it's crucial that these are dealt with at an early stage so they don't become uh, problematic. In the grassland here, we have what is the extent of, of spreading immature uh, scrub. Again, there's uh, a tolerance level here, so small patches of immature scrub or individual seed of immature scrub with, with an overall cover less than 10 percent is accepted, so that's uh, zero. But then as that's getting more and more of a threat and we're looking at the immature uh, scrub here, so it's not the mature scrub uh, within the parcel, which is a valuable habitat in, in its own right, but it's the balance between the mature scrub and the semi-natural grassland and where immature scrub is encroaching onto the grassland, it's leading to a loss of the, the target in this particular example. Again, our thresholds here are high, moderate uh, and low. Similar with the, the, the bracken cover, uh, low cover here is absent or only some scattered fronds and none forming closed uh, canopies. So it can include some isolated patches. So again, a tolerance here because a certain amount of, of these species are, are not problematic and often enhance the, the nature value of the area. But once they're getting into moderate and high, they're indicating a uh, problem and uh, outcompeting other species within the, the grassland ecosystem. Looking at the, the, the peatland uh, scorecard, 
This covers a range of peatland habitats, including blanket and raised bogs, wet and dry heath, and various mosaics of these. So in the first section on the top of the, the scorecard, you record which type of, of, it, of these habitats you're, you're working in. It contains nine results indicators and also records management information, which can be used to guide targeting and supporting actions and landscape actions as well. Here, the weighting is slightly different. We have and the A section on the ecological integrity, it's, it's 60 or 60 percent because of the importance of hydrological integrity for both carbon capture and also the overall uh, functioning of peatland and wetland systems. The hydrological integrity is scored as, as 20 and then the, the threats and future prospects on, on these uh, because uh, Damaging activities in this can learn, lead to long term damage of this this ecosystem and quite difficult to actually uh, repair or restore. Uh, this is given a weighting of, of 20 here in this as well. Again, very similar to the previous scorecard in terms of overall structure. Each of the results indicator has thresholds, either three to five thresholds for uh, each indicator. Again, we, we start off in section A with the, the positive in indicators, and we're here looking at the, the dividing the, the peatland ecosystems, the heathlands and the peatlands into three layers, the, the moss layer, the grass or, or herb layer, and the, 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 the shrub layer, like many, many woodland uh, structures that we'll see in a minute. So you're recording the species present in each. And again, the, because these species are often occur across uh, peatland habitats, these are given uh, a score of 0 to uh, 10 from low to high. What is the combined cover of all these uh, po all positive mosses, liverworts and lichens throughout the field? Again, these really indicate the integrity of the hydrological system and the degree of management. We know that there are more mosses, particularly uh, sphagnum mosses uh, and liverworts are, are occur in these areas with ex extensive, extensive grazing. But lichens also indicate the degree of pressure and also uh, disappear out of an area with, with, with frequent burning or frequent uh, uh, relatively intensive uh, management of the area. So there's our mosses and, and lichens or liverworts are a particularly good indicator in peatland systems. So these here, have a higher weighting than the, the vascular plants above. So these go again go from low to moderate to high from zero to 20. And then again, we use the, the vegetation structure. These are these are not cut. They're uh, usually used for extensive grazing purposes. So again, the vegetation structure here is is measured on the basis of uh, overall uh, optimum grazing with a score of 30 or good. And then we can go in two directions. We can either go in an overgrazed or a, an under undergrazed directed. So it's underutilized or, or, or overutilized. The hydrological integrity. This looks at the surface hydrology and artificial drainage features within the, the bog and heat uh, system. So again, there can be significant alters where there's frequent widespread free flowing drains on the plot with notable effects in the surrounding vegetation drying out the, the bog and it's greater than 20% of the plot affected. It can moderately alter the, the bog or heat hydrology, slightly altered or in an intact system, there's no evidence of past drainage or disturbance across the, the plot. Then we move on to section C uh, of the scorecard here. Is there evidence of, of da damaging activities? Again, quite similar to the ones on the grassland scorecard, have we supplementary feeding, uh, damaged archaeological features, inappropriate herbicide use, burning, dumping, uh, for example. Again, going from uh, low to high and non-recorded also. This section of the scorecard in terms of threats and future prospects also looks at the level of risk uh, uh, to the quality of natural water bodies, similar to the, the, the grassland uh, scorecard in terms of flow, sediment, nutrients uh, and other pollutants. What is the extent of, of bare soil and, and erosion? And of course, the, the non-native invasive species similar to the grassland scorecard. And particularly important in the, in the peatlands is the, the damage due to uh, turbary activities. Where they're used for, for turbary, basically the main ecosystem service extracted from these areas is, is, is fuel production and uh, is often not compatible with other ecosystem services delivery on these areas. So uh, generally speaking, if there's uh, large areas of the, the bog affected by, by turbary, there's a, a substantial negative weighting of minus 30 uh, for, for this. What is the cover of bracken and uh, spreading Im immature uh, scrub uh, on, on these areas? Uh, these are not, not uh, these are recorded to actually see if they'll trigger um, 
landscape actions or if there's need for supporting actions in these areas. So when these are recorded in the, the, the system, the information is sent to the, the CP teams, particularly from monitor high, and a decision can be made if there's a need to do supporting actions. And then again, there's a, at the end of this, uh, a form where the advisor can record or the person scoring system can record uh, common management uh, recommendations to pick from, which again may trigger uh, supporting actions, uh, payments or landscape actions. The scrubber or woodland scorecard again has a, a similar structure here. We have six results indicators with management information also recorded to guide targeting of supporting actions. The weighting here is it's almost all on the ecological integrity of the hundred and the other ones are recorded to actually highlight whether there is a need for uh, supporting actions or if there's substantial damaging activities uh, occurring within the, the system that brings down the ecological integrity recorded in uh, Section A. So here, the first section here is you record the typical scrub species or typical uh, woodland species. This is a double check that you're in the correct habitat in terms of scrub or, or, or woodland. And then we look at the scrub dominated plots and the woodland dominated plots. There's a, an either or uh, dichotomy here that you go in one direction for the scrub, A1S for the scrub, A1W for the woodland dominated areas. This looks at the diversity and structure of the scrub present. Uh, whether it's poor and just single species, dominated, moderate with a number two species, good with three species, or very good for more native species common throughout, and variation in vegetation height and structure throughout the, the plot of, of, of scrubland. Similar on, on, on the woodland, but we're looking at the three typical layers you would find within a woodland that you would see in the guidance document, the, the canopy, the, the shrub, and the, the, the field layer. And again, assessment of each of these layers and whether they're in poor moderate or are a good structural uh, condition and types of species that are present dominated by conifers or deciduous species or a mix of, of both. Then the hydrological integrity, again, very similar to the other scorecards in terms of what is the extent of, of artificial drainage on these areas, whether it's frequent or widespread or no artificial drainage present going from the uh, high moderate to low to none. In terms then of the, the C section, the threats and pressures and the evidence of, of damaging activities to habitats, vegetation or, or archaeology, very similar to the scorecard. So if there is supplementary feeding within the scrub or woodland plot, herbicide application evidence, uh, damage to our removal of, of scrub or trees evident, uh, burning or, or dumping, for example. Again, C2, what is the risk to the quality of natural water bodies within adjacent to or downstream from the field due to our parcel due to the uh, pressures relating to flow, sediment, nutrients or other pollutants? Again, this is divided into high, moderate or low or non-existent. What is the extent of, of bare ground or erosion within the area? And again, non-native species can be a particular issue in some of these woodlands that need to make, could trigger uh, supporting action as well. And at the end of this scorecard, we have the, the common management recommendations uh, to pick from as well that provide some additional information that might guide uh, supporting action or landscape actions on the plot or provide some feedback information to the, the farmer on how they could improve their score within this overall scoring system. Thank you.